Jesus has a problem with people who think that they're very holy, that they're holier and closer to God than other people. In the story we just heard, the Pharisees have a problem with Jesus and his followers because in their eyes, these people are not nearly holy enough. They're interested in poking holes in what Jesus is doing, so they come right out and ask, why aren't you as holy as we are? Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, they ask? There are ways of doing things, holy, proper ways, and you and your followers are not doing them right. From the perspective of the Pharisees, these were not minor things that Jesus and his disciples were failing to do. Washing things from the market before you ate them was a big deal. We've all been taught to wash things we buy at the grocery store. It just makes sense to avoid bacteria or dirt that could be on the food. But it was more than that, even, in Jesus' day. The word the Pharisees use for wash is actually the same word that's used for baptize. Why don't you and your followers baptize your food before you eat it? This kind of washing was about more than just getting the food clean. It was a ritual washing, which was done to cleanse and bless the food, just in case, just in case the farmer had harvested the food on the Sabbath, or just in case the farmer did not set aside the tithe, the offering to God, before he sold the produce. Truly observant Jews were very careful about these things. There were reasons for doing things the way the Pharisees wanted them done, important reasons. And even more than that, the Pharisees are concerned about what will happen if Jesus says that you can be a faithful Jew without doing these things, without following these traditions. What will happen to our identity, they're asking, as people who are distinct from other groups and nations, if we don't do the things that make us distinct? What will happen if the rituals that make us who we are aren't done correctly or aren't done at all? At this time in the election cycle in the United States, we see a lot of red, white, and blue. Can you imagine if a politician didn't wave the flag, say the Pledge of Allegiance, or stand up for the national anthem? They'd be ruined. We expect our leaders to exemplify what it means to be part of this nation. That's kind of why the Pharisees are upset about what's happening with Jesus and his followers. What do we have left if we don't even follow our basic but unique traditions? The Pharisees even believed that the reason they were under foreign domination was because the people had not followed the rules, and so God was punishing them. This is why Jesus is such a threat. So on the one hand, the Pharisees might be trying to trip Jesus up and maybe dampen his growing popularity, but they're also expressing their real concern about their people. At the same time, they raise some important questions for us. Why do we do certain things? What do our traditions mean? Just as one example, why am I wearing a green stole today? Why would it be really wrong if my stole was red or purple today? We also have traditions that help to make us who we are. We do things a certain way, not only because that's how they've always been done, but because they make our liturgy what it is. They show outwardly who we are inwardly. But we have to make sure we don't put them above our purpose in honoring God. That's what Jesus is saying. When Jesus finally responds to the Pharisees, he says, you abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition." God doesn't care how you wash your bronze kettles or your food from the market, he tells them. It's hypocritical 
to be so strict about these things when you don't follow the things that really matter. Loving your neighbor, pursuing justice, caring for those who are left out. There's nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, he tells them. It is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. These rules about how you do things identify you as part of this nation, this community, he says, but that doesn't matter as much. People should know you and know your God by how you live towards others, by your ethics. As we heard from James today in his letter, if any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. The teaching for us out of this lesson is that even if we go to church and do everything right, wear the right color on the right Sunday, sing the hymns in tune, say the right words over the bread and the wine, receive the Eucharistic blessing. If we go back out into the world and we're greedy and mean or don't do anything at all to work for the kingdom of God on earth, then what good is it? Jesus calls that abandoning the commandment of God and holding to human tradition. Jesus never said green should be the color during the season of Pentecost, but he did say that we should love our neighbors as ourselves. Again, James writes, religion that is pure and undefiled before God is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. So we give thanks for our traditions, for these ways of doing things that center us and bind us together as a community, bind us to our forebears in the faith, for the ways in which they help us to worship God with dignity and grace. And we pledge to worship God, not the traditions themselves. In case you're wondering, we traditionally wear green during this season because green is the color of hope. Like when we see green buds on the trees and flowers in the springtime. Throughout this long season, we have hope that God is working to increase in us true religion, as we said in our opening prayer today. Hope which will sustain us as servants of Christ in the world. Amen.